Hello and welcome to another Reaper tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about how to sidechain and duck audio in Reaper. And we'll also be building a sidechain template that you can use uh, specifically for EDM, which is based off of a Virtual Riot video that I watched a while ago. And if you're just here to learn how to sidechain in Reaper, I can show you that really, really quickly. First thing you're going to do is add recomp to the track that you would like the volume to be ducked on. And from there, uh, we're going to take our sidechain trigger, whatever the audio is that you'd like to trigger the sidechain from the routing area. You can drag directly into the recomp window, switch the detector input to auxiliary input, and then adjust your threshold and ratio. I'm going to make a really aggressive sidechain just so you can hear the difference. And now I'll turn off the sidechain so you can hear the original audio and then what it sounds like with the sidechain on. So it's the original, here's the sidechain. From there you can tweak recomp however you'd like it. And this will work with any plugin with four inputs, the dragging the routing into the plugin. So you can use this for a lot of different applications, but specifically for side chaining, that's the quickest and easiest way to do it in Reaper. Now let's talk about how to make this sound similar to what you hear in EDM tracks and how to route things cleanly so you can do this very quick. I'll give you access to my EDM sidechain template in the description of this video, but I want to show you how to build it as well so you can make adjustments. First, what does a sidechain compressor do? Well, it's taking audio from any source and using that audio as the source for compressing other tracks. So let's listen to what happens when we use the kick drum as the sidechain compressor's audio source for this track. The first time we'll hear the finished version. Now let's hear it with no sidechain compression. And lastly, let's hear it with no kick, but still with the sidechain compression happening. So that's what a really heavy sidechain compressor sounds like. Here I have a tutorial session that shows how I route things, but let's go track by track. So at the top of my session, tracks one through four, this is where I would write things or add audio. The bottom part, this is 5 through 11, is mostly bus tracks, and I'll explain that later. So tracks 1 through 4 are all the same. They have either audio or MIDI on them, and they're routed to the appropriate bus tracks. So the synths, if we look down here, are going to the synth bus tracks. The drums are going to different drum buses. I'll talk about that a little bit in a second. But each of these tracks is not going to the master. We want to send these through the buses. And to do this, if we click the routing button and deselect master send, that's one way. We can also highlight all of these tracks like I have, press alt or option on Mac and click the routing button and it will toggle the master send on or off for all of them. You see this changing as I click it. So we want that off. So each of these tracks is sent to their respective buses. And now we'll, we'll talk about what that means. Track five is just marked as folder right now. This could be called a bus or a group or a send if you want. It really doesn't matter. All software handles this in its own way, but folders work similarly to routing in Reaper, but they're much easier to visualize in my opinion. And one note is that the folders will let you apply the same effects or controls to multiple tracks easily. Track six is a folder that contains all the things that I do not want to be sidechained. And in this example, it's just the kick drum. Track seven is called NSC drum bus. This is the non side chained drum bus. And I'm sending just the kick drum to that bus. Track eight is our side chain bus. It contains all the audio that we want to go through the side chain. And it also contains our side chain trigger. And the side chain trigger can be the same as your kick drum in track four, but it gives you the option of using a different sound to trigger the side chain, which maybe you want something longer, something shorter, who knows. Also on track eight, there are two identical instances of recomp, and these are the effects that will give us the side chain compressor sound. I've got these set up as an effects chain preset here, 
so it's easy to just drop them right in, but here's what's inside. So the threshold is negative 24 dB. I have pre-comp set to one millisecond, so the volume dips before the attack of the notes. The attack is about two milliseconds. The release is 20 milliseconds, but you can change this if your tempo is faster or slower. So if you have a slower tempo, you'd probably want this to be a little longer. If you have a faster tempo, you'd probably want this to be a little shorter. The ratio is set to <laughs> infinite, which is pretty extreme. It doesn't have to be that heavy, and honestly, I don't think it should. But for demonstration purposes, I wanted to use this so you can hear it. And then lastly, the detector input. This is the important one. It is set to auxiliary input left plus right. It's going to be at main input by default if you open recomp. So we want that to be set to auxiliary input. And if you do save these as a template, they will all those settings will save, so you don't have to change them each time. Okay, moving on. Track 9 is our sidechain trigger. It's just got a simple 808 kick on it right now, but this is routed to tracks 3 and 4 on the sidechain bus track. So this is going into here. And if you remember the beginning of the video, if you drag the routing from this track into this recomp instance, it will automatically route things into channels three and four for you. So you don't have to do that. Track 10 is the side chained drum bus. Uh, if there's anything in the drums that I do want to go through the side chain compressor, I will send them here. And right now that's just the hi-hat. Track 11 is the synth bus track. Right now, tracks one and two are routed here, and they will all go through the sidechain compressor because they are under the sidechain bus folder. And that's it on how to build the template. So let's listen through and start messing with some things and see how they change the sound. So if I play this and I turn the sidechain trigger off, if I mute it, Now the sidechain bus is not receiving any sidechain trigger there at all. So it's not doing anything. It's not going to sidechain. If I turn this on, the sidechain's working. If I move these triggers to a different beat, you can change the trigger to a different beat. So not necessarily that you would want to do that, but that's how this works and why it works. I also wanted to note that the only reason that the sidechain trigger triggers the sidechain at all is because it's routed into recomp uh, in channels three and four. So that's why the drum bus and synth bus below it don't trigger the sidechain in the same way. Similarly, if you put the kick on different beats, The kick's not actually impacting anything up here. It's all about this sidechain trigger. So this can be anything you want. Now I'll share this template with you, but I think it's really important to know how routing and all of this stuff works in Reaper and why people might set things up in this way. This gives you a lot of control over what your sidechain trigger is, and it separates that out from the actual music that's being written up here. So feel free to experiment with this. Let me know if you have any questions. Please subscribe to the channel if you like these videos. I will have a lot more information for you in the future. And I hope this video helped you reap the benefits of Reaper.